I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story and, and you can believe this or not, but I'm telling you it happened. There were witnesses and I'm not joking. And this is, this is an extraordinary one, but it was human touch and it was the psychomotion energy, Kundalini, you know, psychomotion energy. When I, when I went through the experience, it lasted five weeks. There was a little, this is a whole story. So I'm just going to touch on it because it's, it's, it's a long story, but it, my little granny yoga, Yoda, granny dragon lady, she's about this tall. We didn't like each other. She was my neighbor. She always got in my business. And uh, she was a little dragon. And it was great that we didn't like each other. <laughs> it's kind of funny. She was only about three foot tall. And uh, anyway, during the Kundalini, I was wandering around. And when this happens, you have extraordinary sight into other human beings. Um, you also know things that you couldn't, that you don't study, that this organism, this ancient organism knows. Right. And so I was completely intoxicated, could barely walk. I had a spiral going out the top of my head. At times my eyes were rolling. And so I would wander at times during these five weeks. And I wandered over and she was the curmudgeon of the of the of the neighborhood. She she had a listen to the story, folks. I'm not kidding, just so you know it's possible. She had a an oxygen tank on her back, so and so she could breathe. And then she had this 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 walker, you know, with the four little things in the bottom. And she would literally like, and then she'd stand out front and she'd look at everybody, you know. So it's a bigger story, but I'm just, this is the, it's a beautiful story. She's at the end of my book, but just quickly. So I ended up wandering over there, like, you know, and you could just feel the presence around me. And I walked up to her. And I just had this real innocence, like a, this is super innocence. It was just like, and I looked at her because I had found this little leaf in my heart. Uh, I think it was that morning or the morning before. And that's a whole story. And I walked up to her. She was looking at me. And I said, did you know you have a little leaf in your heart? I found one right here. She goes, blink, blink. I go, yeah, one here. And she goes, And I didn't know I had a leaf in my heart. So yeah, I found it this morning. She goes, oh. And so, so I'm like, I have a song to play for you. She goes, okay. And I grab her hand because she had her little, her little, uh, her little cane. And so we literally walked, her house is right next to mine. And so I literally walked like this with her. Took us about 20 minutes to get like 50 feet or something, 100 feet. <laughs> and so the story about the Zen song, you guys, that's part of the book too. How in the Kundalini, you know, a year before the Kundalini, I, had, I found this guitar and I corded the guitar and there was a ritual around the guitar and the music and how it all came and it's all connected to everything. So Zen song was born. And so I brought her over and I sat her down and we had, I had the other people that were there. So everybody saw this that was there the whole five weeks I was there. And I sat down with my car. I sat her down in front of me. I took my guitar and I played Zen song. And I played it for her. And she sat there and listened. And I said, okay, we're all done. And then I grabbed her hand and walked back to the house. And I said, thank you. She's like, thank you. I am not kidding you. And I have witnesses. The next morning, I'm getting goosebumps talking about this. The next morning, she walked out of her house with no cane and no oxygen tank. And she was lit up like a Christmas tree. Her hair was all done. Her countenance had changed. And I, in my intoxicated state, about fell out of my, I felt fell off my shoes. And everyone came out and looked at her and they go, oh my God. I was amazed and I was a full conduit of this power. I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, this shit's this shit does stuff. And, to, and from that day forward, watched her for the next year. She never put that tank back on. And I think I saw her use the um cane like maybe twice. How many stories have you heard of something like that? 
You know, Christians talk about, oh, miracles and all this stuff. It's usually confirmation bias. I know what it is. I was in it. I did all that. This is the kind of shit I'm talking about that really happens when you're in the real thing. I didn't go up and say, ooh, I'm going to heal you. What a pretentious baboon, baboon to do something like that. You don't do any of that. I stumbled. In, not, I didn't do anything. This power that was in me did something. And she gave me a message. There's a bigger story to it. Her mother said, one day you will give a message to the world. And she gave me a message. And it was stop, look, and listen. And it's the message I give to people now. To stop, look, and listen is a lot of fun. To stop, look, and listen is fun for everyone. Stop, look, and listen. Now the fun's begun. Stop, look, and listen, everyone. That was the song she sang to me after her throat opened during this experience and she wasn't able to sing because she was hit in the throat for about 40 years. And that was the song she gave me. And that was the message she gave me. And that is the message I share with the people that listen. 